No one has contributed more to educating all Americans about the history of the black people than Carter G. Woodson, who in February 1926 established Negro History Week in Washington, D.C. Following W.E.B. Du Bois by a few years, Woodson was the second black American to get a Ph.D. in history from Harvard. Woodson believed that the black experience was too significant to be put alone in the hands of a select few academics. In the fight for racial equality, Woodson believed that his responsibility was to use black history and culture as a weapon. In order to increase public awareness of black history, Woodson created the Association for the Study of Negro Life and Culture in 1916 after relocating to Washington, D.C. Woodson was an odd, determined individual who expected everyone to share his enthusiasm for history. To ensure that pupils would be exposed to black history, Woodson established Negro History Week in 1926 as a result of his frustration. The birth weeks of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln were chosen by Woodson to be observed. It's crucial to understand that Negro History Week did not develop spontaneously. The Harlem Renaissance, which was characterized by writers like Langston Hughes, Georgia Douglas Johnson, and Claude McKay who wrote about the joys and pains of blackness, contributed to the growth and interest in African American culture in the 1920s. The new rhythms of the cities were caught by musicians like Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, and Jimmy Lunsford who were inspired in part by the tens of thousands of black Southerners who moved to urban areas like Chicago. Additionally, photographers and artists like Lois Jones, Richmond Barth, and Aaron Douglas produced photos that glorified blackness and offered more uplifting depictions of the African-American experience. A people who are well-versed in their history are the most potent force there is. Through Negro History Week, Woodson sought to build on this inventiveness and further peak interest. He had two objectives, one was to utilize history to persuade white America that black people had contributed significantly to the development of America and thus merited equal treatment as citizens, Woodson essentially wanted to establish our worth by honoring courageous black people, whether they were inventors, performers, or soldiers. He thought that by doing so, equality would soon follow. His other objective was to raise awareness of black history in life at a period when few universities, books, or newspapers paid attention to the black community other than to focus on its flaws. In the end, Woodson was convinced that Black History Month, which replaced Negro History Week in 1976, would serve as a permanent engine for racial change. Whether Black History Month is still important in today's society is the subject at hand. Is it still a tool for transformation? Or has it just turned just another meaningless school project for kids? Has Black History Month evolved into a period when the media and television focus on black content? Or is it a sound idea whose objectives have been met? Few, if any, could dispute the existence and significance of African Americans in American society, aside from the most fervent rednecks. Or as my daughter Sarah, age 14, put it, I watch Colin Powell on TV every day. Through music and television, all of my friends, black and white, are exposed to black culture. And since 1926, America has undergone a significant transition. Isn't it time to put an end to Black History Month, just as we did with the white and colored drinking fountain signs? Or is it a sound idea whose objectives have been met? Few, if any, could dispute the existence and significance of African Americans in American society. America has undergone a significant transition.
I would want to say that Carter G. Woodson's idea of using black history as a catalyst for transformation and change is still very applicable and very helpful. Despite the significant change in racial relations that has taken place in our lives. With certain adjustments, African American History Month continues to be a symbol of the change and hope that this world sorely needs. The bonds of slavery are gone, but none of us are truly free. The African American past serves as the glue that keeps the enormous diversity within the black community together while also serving as a reminder of how far we still have to go. The influence of inspiring. One thing has not changed, we still need to look to the past for inspiration and direction. People will discover resources and roots that will aid them in living their lives through this inspiration. Who could not be moved by Martin Luther King Jr.'s speeches, dedication to racial justice, and ultimate self-sacrifice? Or through the arguments of Henry Box Brown, who used remarkable cunning to flee slavery, or William and Ellen Craft? Who could not be inspired by Madam C.J. Walker's originality or by prizefighter Jack Johnson's audacity and bravery? Who after hearing the mother of Emmett till recount her tale of sorrow and tenacity could not continue to struggle? The poetry of Paul Lawrence Dunbar, Langston Hughes, Nikki Giovanni, or Gwendolyn Brooks, I am aware, gives me comfort when times are hard. And I get comfort from the beats of Dinah Washington, Sam Cooke, or Louis Armstrong. I'm also motivated by the unnamed slave who persisted so that the culture could live on. Finally, let me reiterate how important Black History Month is to us now and how Woodson's invention is both about the present and the past. Every year, Black History Month serves as a reminder that history is not lost or removed from current events. In the end, February is dedicated to celebrating African American history, which is still as alive and well as it was 94 years ago when Woodson first instituted it. That's because it serves as a reminder that a people who are deeply rooted in their history are the most powerful force on earth.